Now this is a new piece. Um, haven't decided what's going to happen here. Um, it's kind of a coral in a underwater scene. Now I'm going to do a little small demo demonstration on this side, um, which this side looked just like this, and then I added the details. So this is the way it starts off loose, and and then uh, go into it. So I'm going to show how I did this. I'm going to start a little bit on this side just to show the process. So first I'm going to use somewhat of a small brush. I'm going to pull the color out to give it a three-dimensional form. Now from here I can go out in different directions. And just like this right here, I could add more detail to this by just adding a little bit of texture. Um, just giving it more life, I guess. Just so it's not a, just a blank. Area, but it looks like coral growth on there and it just pops it out just a little bit. I can even add a little bit of this orange red to some parts of this. Um, now I'm going to zoom in a little bit for yeah, let's see maybe I'll bring it in just a little bit more. Okay, so this is fairly small. Um, I'm just going to go as kind of a reference. Let me move it over here. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be working on the background and then um, work my way out. So now I'm just kind of adding a little water to this area. Now this will help me when I come in with the layering process. So I could just follow it. And because it's wet, it has that natural little bleed out, which helps with the coral look. And when I go overlapping, it gives it layers. So in other words, some of these background look like in a distance. Now, technically, the, what I would do here is wait till this dries. When I get to a point where it feels comfortable to me, because um, I need to do things in, in layers, um, I don't know if this is going to work because I could wait for it to dry completely and you can see when it's dry down here it actually adds the layers and it automatically puts the other layers behind. Um, and, and this is a way of keeping the flow of the watercolors loose, but also it ends up as a foundation to add the detail and not like super detail but it's just the layering process that gives this all the dimension and if you've seen many coral pieces there's little teeny 
branches out of the coral. And you can see that's a lighter right here. So if I come in like this, it automatically puts this behind. Um, now, if you can see on this, it started off like this. Um, and you can see from over here that it's still really loose. And eventually I would start the detail over here. Um, and that's basically the way I do stuff. I'm going to back out just a little bit. Um, I'm also going to be adding some fish. Now, the way I normally do fish is I put their images all over and then pull the color out. I'm not doing it on the, this type fish. Uh, they are kind of dark in color. So I don't really need to do that. Um, I'm going to be adding some more colorful fish and that's when I pull out the color um, just to make it more brilliant with the colors instead of the starting from a blue. Now, what happens is I'm still going to do detail on this because it, it just makes sense to me. Uh, even though these are somewhat black fish, I am going to come in and just add some highlights. And there's a blending process to this. And if I need to dull things down like this is too bright, I will do that. Um, the way I'm doing the coral in the background. Um, now, hopefully you can see this part. Um, it has a lighter and I've pulled these things in here um, as just with a napkin making the, the coral. So now I can come back in here with somewhat of a bright dry brush. It should still have some of that background coming through, but you can see the detail happening here. So that's kind of what I'm looking for. Those little teeny branches. And I'm going over it, which puts some of this other stuff in the background. Um, and because it is a distance from the main project, it does have kind of a bluing effect. Um, that bluing effect is kind of an indication of distance. It, when you look at some paint, paintings or landscapes of mountains, you'll notice kind of a transition of blue in the background. And it just represents distance, uh, atmospheric distance effect. Um, now, I, I could always come in here and add a little bit more detail. Um, which would push things a little bit. And I'm barely tapping the, the brush. Now this is the way some people do trees too. So um, this is just another technique. Um, when I was younger, I would make scenery pictures. Um, using this kind of technique when I was, um, I don't know, 10 or 11, somewhere in that range. Um, there's a picture I did on my wall in my studio upstairs um, where I have a picture on the wall of one I did when I was actually 12. And so I, I said 13 in, in the studio tour video, but it's actually 12. Um, I actually found, <laughs> had my name in the branches and I was looking for, cause I know I put a date in there and I said 13 in the video, but it was actually, I found the, the numbers eventually and it was actually 12. So, but anyway, you can see the detail coming in here. Um, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more. Back this thing up. 
Um, so that's kind of what I'm doing here. Anyway, I'm going to stop it there. So that's my explanation of how to do coral. That scratching is my... <laughs> Hello, um, I'm Steve Melendres, a model maker, illustrator, scientific illustrator, sculptor, design after history museum in Los Angeles. Done a lot of different things, um, but I'm going to be doing watercolor demonstrations, the techniques I've developed over the years. Um, and it's going to go from a lot of different directions. And also I'm going to be doing videos. Uh, I call them video posters for my daughter. So a lot of stuff that I can leave to my daughter about her crazy dad. <laughs> so um, I'm taking a lot of different directions, but mainly three. Um, so anyway, that's my introduction that I'm going to attach to every thing I'm doing now so I don't have to repeat this.